In my last few videos I've been talking about the potential of creating coloring books on Amazon KDP and in today's video I want to tell you more about how to make your books stand out from the rest. Hello home bosses, my name is Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com. Welcome to my channel, which is all about helping you to make money online with self-publishing. So in my last videos, I talked about coloring books and how they are such a good type of book to create for Amazon KDP because first of all, there's a lot of potential for making sales and also because they are so great to create a whole brand around. So you could create a coloring book brand and I like to create brands around my books because they help me sell more books. In one of my previous videos, I showed you a coloring book that was making more than $8,000 per month. And in my last video, I showed you where to find good quality images to create your coloring books. You can use Canva to make your coloring books as a design tool, but it's always a good idea to find really good images elsewhere and not use the images that are available on Canva. And I talked about a membership site that you can use called the Publishers Vault and you can find a huge number of images for your coloring books on there. So that is one of the places that you can find good quality images that you can use without any problems for your KDP books. And another really good resource for coloring books is the self-publishing titans coloring book tool. That is called the coloring book maker and I will probably make a separate video on that because I think it deserves that I show you what exactly you can do with that tool. So there are only a few places as far as I know that you can go to and access really safe images that you can use on Amazon KDP and that are unique to you and that are not being used by anybody else. So those are my recommendations for places to find images for your coloring books and I will leave links to both of them under this video and like I said if you want to watch the video that I did previously on the Publishers Vault I will leave a link after this video as well. So you can watch that and take a look at what is included in that particular resource. I think it's an amazing way to create coloring books totally safely. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is the kind of coloring books that you can create to stand out. I've been looking on Amazon and I can see a lot of coloring books that have been created using AI and I have nothing against AI but I don't think that it is quite ready for coloring books because I think that the people who use coloring books have specific requirements that AI, in my opinion, isn't able to really create just yet. Maybe in the future, I'm sure it will, but at the moment, I just don't think they are good enough. And there is a lot out there that isn't quite the quality that I would expect. And just to show you an example of what I think is a really good coloring book, I've got a coloring book here that my mother-in-law has colored in. She loves coloring books and she has quite a collection. And it's a really good idea to talk to somebody, if you are going to create coloring books, talk to somebody that colors in coloring books so that you know what they want from a coloring book, what they like about it, what do they need from a coloring book, what do they enjoy. And I think it's really important if you're going to create any type of book, find out what your audience wants. So the first thing you need to do is to identify your audience. You need to know who you're making your coloring book for. Is it for small children? Is it for older children? Is it for teenagers? Is it for adults? So you really need to, first of all, find out who you are creating your coloring book for. And sometimes it's not enough to say coloring book for children because there are different age groups for children and a, a three-year-old would need a completely different coloring book to a 12-year-old, for example. So you really do need to find out and research what your audience is looking for in a coloring book. And uh, once you've established your audience, you need to select a theme. So 
I think you could say you need to choose a niche that resonates with your audience. So for example, if you are creating a coloring book for a five-year-old child, you will have to select a niche that is appropriate for that child. So there is no point in making really complicated coloring books when your target audience is a five-year-old. So it is really important that the niche that you choose matches the audience that you choose. And then you also have to identify what does your chosen audience need? What do they look for in a coloring book? And that's why I said it's a really good idea to talk to people who love coloring books and who use them. And then you can find out what they actually like about them. So in my case, my mother-in-law showed me the books that she's coloring in. So I just wanted to show them to you so you see what I mean by them. There's a really nice one she has, which is called Escape to Wonderland, and it's a coloring book adventure illustrated by good wives and warriors, and it's based on Alice in Wonderland. And the reason they can use that is because Alice in Wonderland is in the public domain, so it's safe to use. Just make sure that if you're using it, don't make it Disney related or use anything that resembles the Disney images. Uh, from Alice in Wonderland, from the film. And I think it's wonderful. So that is the cover. And uh, this is one of the pages that my mother-in-law has actually colored in. So I think it looks amazing. She hasn't finished the Cheshire Cat yet, but um, I think it looks stunning. And what I really like about it is that it's not just the images, it's the quotes from the book. So in this case, it says, oh, I've had such a curious dream, said Alice. So it just gives you a little bit more, I don't know, something extra. It's not just a coloring book page. It has a little quote from, from the story. And uh, if you go further, there's another example of a page. And again, it's got a little quote or a passage from the book. And uh, it's all about the crocodile. So if you've read Alice in Wonderland, you can... Um, sort of identify what this is talking about. And if you're a fan, then you know exactly what this is. And there's another really lovely page with the flamingos. So they feature in Alice in Wonderland. And I love how they've created them in a kind of heart shape. <laughs> and it's really good for coloring in. My favorite page out of the whole book is this hedgehog. And you can see it says, the balls were live hedgehogs, the mallets live flamingos. So if you know the story of Alice in Wonderland, you know that she used the flamingos as mallets and uh, the poor little hedgehog as the balls. And I just love this picture here. That's probably my favorite from the whole book. And the reason I'm showing you these books is because I want you to see how they are different to, for example, an AI created coloring page. When I've seen AI created coloring pages, the actual line drawings are sometimes not very clear. Sometimes you can find gray areas in them. They're grayed out and you can see it's either black or white. There's no grays in here. And uh, also the lines are all connected. Sometimes I see gaps in the AI created ones that doesn't really make sense. You want a coloring page to be really clear. You want to see what you are coloring in and what it is that you're coloring in. And with AI, sometimes there are things in there that just don't make sense. And uh, this is why it's important to use good quality images for your coloring books. So the reason I wanted to show you this Alice in Wonderland inspired one is because it uses the texts and it has really clear images. And it just makes it different to other coloring books. It's based on a story so you can storyfy your coloring books and you can base it on a well-known story as long as it's in the public domain so that you're not infringing on copyright and adding the little quotes here and there with the pictures just makes it more unique and more interesting and the other book i wanted to show you is the world of favorite poems coloring book by jane hayes and uh, I really like this one because it combines coloring pages with poetry. And I'll just show you some of the inside. So that is the cover. 
and uh, that's the first page. Then it's got this beautiful illustration of a toad and the poem is Song of Mr. Toad and that's a poem by Kenneth Graham. So it's got an image on one page and the poem on the other page. And I just think this creates a far more interesting colouring book than just a colouring book full of colouring pages. There's another example, A Red Rose, another lovely poem by Robert Burns. And this one is kind of spread on two pages and it's got the lovely rose to colour in and also the poem. Again, it just makes it so much more interesting. And you can see that the lines are really clear. There are no grey areas, no shadows, and it's just a better quality colouring book. Another really lovely page is from the poem To a Mouse. So it's got a little extract. That's another poem by Robert Burns and it's just beautiful. I really like how they've combined well-known poetry with really lovely images. And uh, again, it's got the poem on one page and the main colouring image on the other page, but it also spills over into the page where it's got the lovely poem. And uh, another one is this one's answer to a child's question. Really lovely imagery again. And the last one that I wanted to show you is this one, When You Are Old, and uh, it's a poem by William Butler. I just love these kind of books that add a little bit extra to your colouring pages. I just wanted to show you this as an example of how you can make your colouring books more unique because you're you're not only selecting a niche or a theme, but you're incorporating other types of designs and you're incorporating poetry or you could incorporate, um, I know there are a lot of colouring books that have motivational quotes in them, but I think that it's already been done. I really try to look for things that haven't been overdone on Amazon. I think most colouring books have got um, motivational or inspirational quotes in them. And uh, I think it's time to maybe look for other things so that it's not adding to all the noise on Amazon, just creating something a little bit different. So I think this is a good idea to create a coloring book that is combined with poetry. You could create your own poems, for example, or, or you could add interesting facts. If your coloring book is for children, for example, you could, you could make it funny. You could have funny little jokes in it, or you could teach children something. So you could teach the numbers using a coloring book, or you could teach the alphabet using a coloring book and they have to color in all the, all the different letters or all the different numbers. So there are so many different ways to design a unique coloring book that hasn't been done before. So, Including quotes and affirmations and educational content is always a good idea. And when it comes to the design of your book, you could create them as in this case, you could have text on one page and then the coloring page on the other, on the opposite side, or you could incorporate quotes or little poems inside the coloring pages themselves. And if you're creating an educational coloring book for small children, let's say, you could have a sidebar on one of the sides of the book and uh, create some interesting facts or some questions. And uh, you could also create a coloring book that incorporates activities as well. So that would make it even more interesting. And what I love about coloring books is that there's just an endless supply of niches. So for example, you could have holiday themed pages such as Christmas, Halloween or Easter, and you could have related activities and coloring challenges incorporated in that. Or you could base your books on events like the Olympics or the World Cup. Recently, we had a, a solar eclipse and that would have been a really good occasion to create a science based coloring book for children, for example, or even for adults. So it's always a good idea to, to have a look and see what's going on around you, what's currently um, a, a good topic in the news or worldwide and uh, get inspired by that and create a coloring book around it. So I just wanted to show you some examples. What is really important when you're making or when you're thinking of making a coloring book 
is to really know who your audience is. That is the main thing that you should take away from this video. Really research who you're making this coloring book for, because I see a lot of coloring books on Amazon that are too generic. Coloring books for children, you're not targeting your niche enough. You really need to know who exactly you are targeting if it's a child then you need to know the age, you need to know what kind of interests they like. And once you've identified your audience, then you can think about the topics, the niches, and do a little bit of research on that. And then add things to your books that make them more unique. So you can add affirmations and inspirational quotes. But as you can see, you can also add poetry or you could add stories or talk about a journey. Take the person you're targeting on a journey of exploration. So you could make a coloring book about the jungle and take them through there and just add more information about it, make it educational. And that is the other thing you can do. You can tap into the educational themes and teach children the alphabet through coloring book pages or teach them the numbers or teach them about science and nature. So there's so many different niches you can think of and you can incorporate all of that in a coloring book and make it much more interesting than just a simple coloring book that is just um, images thrown together. So if you want to know where you can find really good images for this. Take a look at my last video that I made about the Publishers Vault. I will leave a link after this video on that and I will leave a link under this video as well where you can take a look at the Publishers Vault and also at the Self-Publishing Titans Coloring Book Maker. And I'll probably make a separate video about that as well to show you what you can do with that one. But today was all about how you can really improve on your coloring books, how you can make them more unique and uh, different ideas for you. So let me know what you think about this video. Has it inspired you to create this type of coloring book? And let me know if you have created coloring books, how was the journey for you? And if you have any questions, let me know below the video and I'll try my best to help you. But for now, I just want to thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.